be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, on whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who didst inspire thy servant, St. Luke the physician, to set forth in the gospel the love and healing power of thy Son, manifest in thy church the life power and love to the healing of our bodies and souls, through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, for as much as without thee we are not able to please thee, mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. 
and into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It's great to see everybody today. Hope you're all doing well. There's a couple of quick announcements to go through. And good morning to everyone watching us online as well. We're delighted to have you with us today. The flowers on the altar are given by Tom and Linda Flanders in celebration of their second wedding anniversary. Congratulations, guys. Would you like to come up here and receive an anniversary blessing? Absolutely. Stand right here. Let us pray. O oh God, who has so consecrated the state of matrimony, that in it is represented the spiritual marriage and unity betwixt Christ and his church. Look mercifully upon these thy servants, Tom and Linda, that they may love, honor, and cherish each other, and so live together in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and of peace. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. Join us for the rector's forum following the service today. Uh, refreshments will be served. Join us for our fall study this week, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. or Thursday morning at 10 a.m. here at the church. It's the same, same class of both Times. And also you can watch us online here on Facebook Live um, Tuesday night, or you can look for it after that on our YouTube channel, uh, which you can access from our, our website. And finally, our, month, our monthly Requiem Mass will be this Friday, October 23rd at 10 a.m. Oh, and one more announcement. Our October newsletter is available. That's been emailed out to everyone, uh, posted on the website. Did I post it on the website? I'll check. I'll make sure that's posted on the website. It has been emailed out. Um, and I have hard copies available on one of those little cocktail tables out there, right as you go out, out the door, the one on your left. So you can uh, take a hard copy if you want that. OK, any other announcements that need to be made? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Today we celebrate the feast of St. Luke the Evangelist, the author of the third gospel and the Acts of the Apostles. The collect for today is one of the more recent ones in our prayer book. It was composed for the 1928 Book of Common Prayer to replace the original collect that Archbishop Thomas Cranmer composed for the first prayer book of 1549. This newfangled 92-year-old collect reads as follows. Almighty God, who didst inspire thy servant St. Luke the Physician to set forth in the Gospel the love and healing power of thy Son, Manifest in thy church the life, power, and love to the healing of our bodies and souls through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to use this collect to sort of frame my thoughts for this holy day of St. Luke the Evangelist. The theme of the collect is healing. This is because Luke is traditionally held to have been a doctor. In Colossians 4.14, St. Paul refers to Luke as a physician. But the healing referred to in the Collect is not about Luke's personal medical skills. Rather, it is about the healing power of Jesus Christ, about whom Luke wrote in his Gospel and Acts. Healing indeed characterized the ministry of our Lord, and later, and down to this very day, his continued ministry to man in and through his one holy Catholic and apostolic church. In the book of Acts, there are innumerable accounts of the apostles miraculously healing people in the name of Jesus. And in the ensuing centuries, the church established hospitals and missions and has always, down to today, ministered to those in dire physical and spiritual need. We have seen this healing ministry and mission play out here in the life of our own church over the years. When I arrived almost 10 years ago, I was amazed to discover just how many parishioners were involved in the medical profession. At, different, at all different levels. Early on, therefore, I naturally discerned that healing was one of the charisms of our small but mighty parish. You know, sometimes in, in churches, I, I've been around to a few, you have sort of a, a, a concentration of professions that the church in, in Vero Beach, where I served, was full of lawyers. They had so many lawyers at that church, and the rector used to get up and just make lawyer jokes nonstop from the pulpit. <laughs> and uh, they loved it. <laughs> they absolutely loved it. Here, we always had all these people working in the medical profession. And I guess that's, you know, a common in Maryland. We have so many hospitals and, and thing, things like that. It's kind of, kind of a big business here. So I thought, well, healing, that, that's one of the charisms of, of our church. And not just healing, though, on the physical level, but also on the spiritual level. I've seen God's faithfulness in healing many who are sick, helping them survive illness or very dangerous tra surgeries. But I've also seen how God has healed people spiritually, how he's turned lives around, worked in people's hearts, making them go from lukewarm or spiritually dead Christians to very faithful men and women of God, who then go on to bring this spiritual healing of Christ to others. So while the whole church is about healing, we here at St. Albans seem, at least from my perspective, uh, to have a special calling to that, which isn't to say that other churches don't as well, or that we are the perfect church with no need of improvement. I'm not saying that. Now, having this charism of healing is important because the world is in need of healing today. We look around us and see it reeling in spiritual sickness, violence in our cities and communities, this, these riots, 
happening all over the country that have just remained unchecked. Generational addiction and poverty. You know, one, of, one of the problems that in the city of Baltimore is not just uh, this person is on drugs, it's they're on drugs, the parents are on drugs, and the grandparents are on drugs. It's, it's generational. Rampant materialism and greed. Sexual perversion, mental illness, the environment abused, and on and on. It is a world reeling in spiritual sickness. The typical secular answer of more and better government to these problems, while it can certainly be helpful to a degree, cannot address the spiritual disease within human beings themselves that is at the root of these problems. That is not their department or area. It's not within the purview of the government, at least the American government, to do that. Jesus himself gives the solution in John chapter 3, verse 7. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. So much of what people of goodwill try to do through government to improve individual lives and larger society is quite frankly stymied because of our fallen human nature. I mean, welfare fraud and abuse is a perfect example of this. You know, you have a system set up to give people food and clothing and things like that, and then people are going around selling cars and, and abusing the system, which, which we've all heard about in the news. See, the problem is something within us has to change. We have to be spiritually reborn, made new on the inside by the grace and power of Almighty God through faith in Christ. As individual people are healed, society will as well be healed of its ill. To be born again, we have to repent of our sins and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and follow him as our Lord and Savior. Put another way, our healing begins when our fundamental orientation in life has changed, when it has done a 180 and we are now oriented in the right direction. When I was a kid, I... Uh, I must have been 16 or 17. I was driving up to New Jersey to visit my aunt or something like that. I forget why. And um, I was going by myself. It was kind of a big deal. I'd never like, gone out of state before. So my dad's, all right, Gordon, look at the map. This is before you had MapQuest and phones and all of that. And you, get up, you go up here, you get off, and blah, blah, blah. And remember, if you get turned around, the basic direction you're going is north. We're here, New Jersey is here. So if you get off somewhere and, and then you get back on, you wonder which direction you're going, just remember, you are going north. You are going north. We follow the direction. That, and that's what, what conversion is like. It is, a, it is a change of direction from going one way uh, to the other. That's what it's like to have this new life in Jesus Christ and a new way of thinking and looking at the world. You know, all of these uh, secular initiatives, say, well, we need to, well, let's just have, a, have, a, have an agenda here. Let's make a new government department to tackle this societal, societal problem, um, and, and we'll do it all without God. Um, that's like taking, I mean, to go back to a car and driving analogy, that's like taking your car, putting new tire, you know, new, I can't drive a car, so I'm having problems driving a car, so let's get your car, we'll put new tires on it, we'll, we'll put, uh, we'll repaint the lines on the road, we'll make the driving test more stringent, you know, or, and, and then there will be no more accidents, and everything will be great. All of that's fine and well, but it doesn't do any good if the driver can't see, you know? The driver doesn't have glasses, maybe. Really, the driver, something in him needs, needs to change. He needs to get his eyes checked, put those glasses on. That's what, that's what I'm, I'm talking about with the spiritual healing of Jesus Christ. 
where does this change come from, this conversion, this new orientation, this new relationship with God in life? It comes through Christ himself working in the hearts of men by the power of the Holy Ghost. But here's the key. He works in and through us, you and I, the church, his mystical body. We are his agent of healing. We are the church. We are the ones who have to communicate the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. We have to tell people about Jesus and what he's done in our own lives and what he can do in theirs. The kingdom of God, the healing power of Christ, does not spread through magic. We don't see that anywhere in the Bible. You know, the day of Pentecost, where 3,000 people were, were baptized, Peter got up and preached the gospel. He preached one powerful sermon, and then the Holy Spirit worked. So it doesn't, the kingdom of God doesn't come about just through magic. Here, one day it's here, and one day it's not here, and one day it's here. Oh, who'd have thunk it? Rather, it spreads through the faithful witness of God's people who have experienced his healing power firsthand and then want to share that and share his love with others who do not know him. We are the witnesses of Christ, and this is what the gospel is getting at today. Jesus says, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. That is you and I. True, lasting, and eternal healing, salvation, will only come about as the hearts of men are turned to God. And he calls us who already believe in him and who have experienced his healing grace and power to go forth and tell others about him. What about us? When was the last time we mentioned God and Jesus in conversation with friends? When was the last time we shared with someone something that God has done in our life? When was the last time we recommended to a suffering person that they turn to God for relief and salvation? I had to, to take the kids out to a store. I will not name the store. It's a, one of these big box chains yesterday to buy a birthday present. And uh, the one thing about this store is uh, no matter which where you go to it, anywhere in Maryland and anywhere in the country, everyone who works there is just seems miserable. It must be a terrible place to work. So uh, I was there, we were in line yesterday, and, uh, and it was amazing because they actually had maybe like four or five cash registers open. Normally, you know, there's like a whole bank on either side and there's just one open and this long, you know, socialist, communist line waiting. So we get there, I get up there, and the person checking me out is absolutely miserable. I mean, just, just sad. I mean, just really had a sad countenance. And have a nice day. Is that you have a coupon? And I thought, oh my gosh, this poor woman. And I just checked out, and I left. I had the kids. And, and then I thought to myself, you know, I should have said something. You know, just find something to say, like, you know, you're doing okay because, you know, God loves you. you know, think about, about God and all he, he's done here in your life, you know. And it, it just, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. But I, next time, I'm going to do it. That, that's, what, that's the kind of thing we, we do to bring Christ's healing to the world. You got to tell people about it first so they'll get to know him and experience him and invite him into their life. The collect for the day reads, Almighty God, who didst inspire thy servant, St. Luke the physician, to set forth in the gospel the love and healing power of thy son. Manifest in thy church the life, power, and love to the healing of our bodies and our souls through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus Christ really and truly heals. We need to bring his healing to the world and tell them about it so they'll turn to him, the great physician. Be healed of sin and find eternal life. May God help us to be faithful witnesses of our Lord. 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostles has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice through the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those on our parish prayer list and those whom we mention in the secrecy of our hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Be teaching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time which previously have committed, but I thought word and need against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, who either earnestly repent and are heartily 
truly sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is really unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ hath unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is me to write so to you. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may bear, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to us, and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and features of bread and wine, 
that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merit and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Lord who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. <clears throat> the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for me, preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. I lay my hand upon thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, beseeching the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all thy pain is that the body be put to sight, the blessing of health may be restored unto thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this and remember 
my words that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in my heart, by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. I lay my hand upon thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, be teaching the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all thy pain and sickness of body, being put to flight, the blessing of all may be restored unto thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. I lay my hand upon thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, beseeching the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. That all thy pain and sickness of body being put to flight, the blessing of health may be restored unto thee. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee, for that thou hast not safe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through the hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will for men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray.
passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Souls of the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace. 